Hello, everyone. This is Rebecca M. Holtz again with the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome you to our very first virtual luncheon. Thank you so much for spending your lunch hour with us today. We're going to have a really fun time together. And um, I apologize if you hear some noise in the background, that would be the rain. So although my little dog is sequestered somewhere so that he can't make any noise, there's not much I can do about the weather. So if it sounds like there is some rain going on, it definitely is. Well, welcome again to our very first virtual luncheon. All of you have been sent an agenda ahead of time. If for some reason you don't have it, simply go to our website, go to the calendar of events, mountpleasantchamber.org, calendar of events, click on today's luncheon, and at the bottom of the page, you'll find the agenda. So now I want to welcome the president of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce, Shane Griffin. Hello, Shane. Hey, Rebecca, it's great to see you. How are you today? I'm doing great. I love the fact that we're getting rain. Interesting timing. <laughs> yeah, well, better than an earthquake. I don't know if uh, folks that are on this call today felt the rumble that I did, but uh, it was only about two or three seconds. I asked uh, some of the board members before we started uh, the luncheon here today if they felt it. Some did, some did not, but it lasted only two or three seconds, but uh, it did shake the house and there was uh, a discernible uh, rumble. So, uh, interesting times right now to say the least. So welcome to our new normal. This is our first ever uh, virtual monthly luncheon of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce and we thank you very much for attending today. Uh, I would like to uh, hand it off now to Mr. John Carroll who will open us up with the invocation and the pledge. John? Let us pray. Lord God and Father, we come to you with thanks and praise. First, Father, for the opportunity to meet in this extraordinary way during this extraordinary time. We ask your blessing on those present in this live event as well as those who are attending by recording. Second, Lord, we lift up those who just by going to work each day are putting themselves at risk of illness and in harm's way. We remember them and we ask for your protection for them, Lord, as they go about their duties in a way that makes heroes. And finally, Lord, as we move into the Memorial Day weekend, we lift up those families who have given of their loved ones their lives for the sake of our freedom that we enjoy and oftentimes we take for granted. We raise all of these people up, Lord, and we ask for your blessing, your strength, your grace and wisdom and we do this all in your mighty name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shane, back to you. Thank you, John. We uh, appreciate uh, that uh, opening of the meeting. Before we get to Lauren Sims, I do have some opening uh, comments that I would uh, like to, to get across. We've got so much going on in the background. I want to make sure that each and every one of you on the call today are uh, certainly aware of the resources that we have available to you. First of all, I want you to know that your Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce is here for you. If you need a connection, if you need a resource, if you have a question, a concern, please feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to us directly. Uh, you can visit our contact us page and send an email to info at mountpleasantchamber.org. Or if you'll also visit our board of directors page, each one of us with our lovely pictures has our email address. So if you'd like to reach out to us uh, individually, you can certainly do that. It has been my joy during this time to connect people that are in need. So if you need a person, a resource, if you have a question, please feel free to reach out to us. We will get back to you in a very timely fashion, but I really want you to know that we are here for you. We thank you for your membership and we thank you for your patience through all of this. Uh, secondly, I want to recognize my board of directors. As I've said before, this is, and as you know, this is a volunteer board. These folks uh, take on these duties because they love the organization, they care about the organization. Uh, obviously, my name is Shane Griffin. I'm the president of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. Uh, my president-elect, next year's president, is uh, Mr. Eddie Phipps. My uh, vice president is Jennifer Maxwell. The president emeritus is Chris Dobbs. The secretary is Kathy Herman. The treasurer, of course, is Mr. Joe Hinsky, the man with the money. 
the uh, at-large board members are Brian Sherman and John Carroll. That is your executive board, and I uh, applaud them for their efforts over these past few months, and really since uh, they became members of the board of directors of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. I also want to recognize our committee chairs. Uh, again, all volunteer. They do this because they care, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to put together all these initiatives that we are in the midst of. First of all, philanthropy, Mariana Lewis and Nikki Burnett. Uh, thanks to our membership committee, Ben Knight and uh, Sarah Wiggins. Uh, the Expo Committee, Michael Cochran and his team are doing a great job in moving us forward in regards to the Expo. We thank them for all their efforts. Uh, thanks to Alex Shee and Vicki Boyd uh, in programs and strategic partnerships right now being handled by Rebecca Imholtz, as is marketing uh, as well. And uh, thanks to Eddie Phipps, who is also our general counsel. So again, I applaud the committee chairs for all the great work that they've done uh, over the past, uh, what now, five, six months of uh, 2020 as we continue to uh, roll through the COVID-19 uh, situation. Moving on to the Coronavirus Resource Center page, if you have not had a chance to visit the website and check out this Resource Center page, I urge you to do that. There is a lot of great content, not only about the virus itself from the WHO, the CDC, uh, from uh, South Carolina DHEC, there's also business-related articles from the town of Mount Pleasant, from the Moultrie News. We've got a lot of great partnerships that we've been able to put together for the Coronavirus Resource Center page. It's very simple, just visit the website, mountpleasantchamber.org, and you'll see at the top there, the Coronavirus Resource Center page. We also have offers from over 60 members now, offers and updates. So if you're looking for a deal right now, which a lot of people are, uh, we do have some members that have posted some deals and updates to their business on the uh, updates and offers section of the Coronavirus Resource Center page. Also too, if you are looking for a job or if you have an opening for a position, we have a job posting page at the website as well. It's right there on the tab at the homepage. You can click job postings. You can visit that, post your opening, see what's available. We have right now, I think four or five openings that are there. So visit that job posting page uh, as well. Also, as part of the Coronavirus Resource Center page, you can see all of our past webinars. If you've missed uh, Monday with the mayor, which we do each and every Monday at 3.30, if you missed um, the sales pivot by John Carroll, which happens every Tuesday at 3.30, and then we have other webinars that we've done over time. Uh, Joe Hinsky has hosted one on the PPP. Mike Compton has hosted one uh, on marketing. All of those webinars are right there at that resource center page at mountpleasantchamber.org. You can also flip over to our YouTube channel as we've launched a YouTube channel and subscribe to that. All of the webinars, uh, all the Monday with the mayors uh, are there as well. So be sure to, uh, to check that out. Also visit our calendar of events page. We have so many things happening and so many changes obviously going on that we want to ensure that you know uh, what's coming up in regards to the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. So again, visit the calendar of events page. Uh, and one more reminder about the Resource Center page. We also have links to the Accelerate South Carolina. You can also get business alerts from the town of Mount Pleasant. And there is also a link to the One Region Reignite page that uh, Mayor Haney talked so much about uh, when he and I get together on Monday with the mayor. So again, a large amount of content and a wonderful opportunity for you to visit the website and check out all of that content that you need. That is the Coronavirus Resource Center page at the website, mountpleasantchamber.org. Uh, I believe uh, looking over my notes, that's all that I have for the opening comments. Thank you for your patience and your time. And now I'll turn it over to Lauren Sims, who is the Community and Government Affairs Chief at the Town of Mount Pleasant. Hello, Lauren, it's good to see you. Hello, Shane, good to see you as well. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be with you this afternoon, um, even if it is only virtually. Um, I do want to thank Shane and the Chamber for their tremendous work and partnership throughout this pandemic, um, just making sure that businesses are connected and that they're getting the information that they need. Um, they have been tremendous partners throughout this entire pandemic and, and we're just so grateful to be a part of the Chamber. Um, like uh, similar to, to Shane's comments, I just want to reiterate that the town is here for you. Mayor and Town Council have been working very hard um, to support businesses throughout this pandemic. Um, and to that point, I, I would like to just remind everyone of three very important ordinance changes uh, the council has made in order to support businesses. The first being a, allowing expanded outdoor operations for both restaurants and retail operations. 
All you would have to do is to register your expanded outdoor operations on our website. It's very simple, does not require professional drawings, anything of that nature. Um, we just ask that you upload just a few facts about what you're doing, um, send it to us so that we're aware and then off you go. Um, the other thing is allowing for a reduction in the environmentally friendly packaging and products ordinance, otherwise known as the plastics ordinance. Um, understanding that supply chain management is a little bit difficult right now. It is a little more difficult to get some of those environmentally friendly products in. So they've relaxed that ordinance a little bit. Similarly, they have relaxed the temporary sign permit ordinance. So if you are reopening, you are um, expanding your outdoor operations, and you would like to post a sign to let folks know, go ahead and do it. You do not require a temporary sign permit at this time. So please go ahead, post your sign, let folks know that you are open for business. And similar to the chamber, we too at the town have a business portal on our website um, that has all the information you could possibly want about doing business post pandemic, reopening guidelines, um, SBA information, anything that you could need. So please check us out on the website, www.tompsc.com. And of course, if there's anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us here at the town and please make sure that you join Mayor Haney every Monday afternoon for Mondays with the Mayor. And with that, I will turn it back over to you, Shane. Thank you, Lauren. I certainly enjoy uh, having you and the mayor on Monday with the mayor at uh, 3.30 every Monday. I did speak to the mayor uh, this week uh, on the phone talking about the future of Monday with the mayor and uh, we are going to continue that segment indefinitely. We will take this coming Monday off because it's of course Memorial Day, but we will be back with Monday with the mayor on June the 1st and we will keep that going indefinitely. We feel it's vital to get the information uh, from the mayor to our members and also too, it gives the town an opportunity to get out any information that they deem necessary to, uh, to reach out to our members with. So uh, we thank the town for that wonderful partnership that we have. We could not do what we do without the town support and we thank them uh, very much. While I'm giving out thank yous, I'd be remiss if I didn't give some shout outs uh, to Rebecca Inholtz, Tamara Cornwall, uh, Amanda bunting Komen, and Kim Swanger. Uh, these are the folks that are working behind the scenes along with our uh, volunteer board in getting you the information that you need in regards to that Coronavirus Resource Center page. So I wanted to make sure that we uh, thank and we recognize the volunteer board, Tamara, Rebecca, uh, Amanda, and also Kim for their efforts. We thank them very much. With that, I will turn it over to uh, Mariana Lewis for an update from the Philanthropy Committee. Hello, Mariana. Hey Shane, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to give everyone an update on what we have been up to with the philanthropy committee. Um, I'd first of all like to recognize my co-chair Nikki Burnett. Nikki has um, been just a tremendous help and uh, could not be a better teammate. We started out the spring um, with a huge bang and got started on our journey bags, which each of you remember was for the, that were removed from the homes by DSS. We would supply those bags so that they had their essentials. Um, we also started, uh, continued our momentum with the Wando Hunger Initiative and planned on doing our scholarships this month. So where we are with each of them, um, the Journey Bags project we have put on a soft hold. Uh, what we mean by that is we are not currently uh, collecting Journey Bags, but if you have one, please hang on to it. We will be able to use it for sure in the future. Um, our second initiative, the Wando Hunger Initiative, I'd like to thank Robin Manna and Stacy Lawrence for making the best of best use of the food that we had collected when we didn't have the channels to distribute through the schools when the schools were shut down. Um, they have taken the food and made great use of it by blessing first responders, those in hospitals. So great job, Robin and Stacy. And again, we've got a soft hold on that initiative and look forward to ramping back up um, as all of us are. The scholarships initiative, we had to put a delay on awarding our scholarships, but look forward to doing that next month. 
And we as a committee just encourage each of you to keep up your giving, um, whether it's within your family, with your friend group, your neighborhood, your faith community, um, just look around and see where you can be a blessing to others. And we look forward to uh, things getting ramped back up. And Shane, that's all we've got. Thank you very much, Mariana. I appreciate the efforts of you and Nikki and your committee. Uh, the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce is proud of its philanthropy uh, committee, and we thank you for, for your efforts. Let's move on to the Expo Committee and Michael Cochran. Michael and his committee are doing... Shane, thank you so much, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, your Expo Committee, our Expo Committee, has been busy since last fall planning the 10th annual uh, 2020 Business and Community Expo scheduled for September the 24th, 2020. Um, currently, we have 28 businesses that have reserved booths. Um, we've got an early bird deadline that has been pushed back to May the 31st. Now, with COVID-19, um, the committee has been very busy um, looking at options and how to make this work um, effectively for our community. And the four options that we're looking at right now are number one, proceed with a live expo and adhere to the social distancing and municipal guidelines as presented by the town. Uh, number two, add a virtual expo to the experience. The third area is conduct a completely virtual online experience if we're not able to meet in person. Or number four, which is one that we certainly don't want to look at necessarily, and that's postponing or even canceling the event. Um, the next steps that we have for the committee are to provide a Zoom meeting to discuss the virtual expo. We have some committee members that are very talented in this area and have provided a very good um, explanation of what it virtual expo could look like and what it could do, um, and also a survey that we're going to send out to our membership. Shane, thank you very much, and I'll turn it back over to you, sir. Thank you, Michael. I know you certainly did not sign up uh, for this when I asked you to be the uh, expo chair uh, in uh, 2020, but uh, you and your committee are doing great work, and uh, it's, a, it's a challenge, but making some tough decisions as we move along here, and we're grateful to you and your committee for the great work uh, that you're doing with the expo. I'll flip it over now to Sarah Wiggins and Ben Knight to give us an update on membership. Hello, you two. Hello. Thank you, Shane. Uh, we wanted to let each of our members know that we appreciate them and we thank you all for supporting one another. Um, we'd like to welcome about 15 new uh, members that have joined since our last meeting. Um, we have Recitals Hair Salon, Forte Jazz Lounge, Forever Green Incorporated, Raymond James, First Watch Daytime Cafe, the African American Historical Settlement Commission, Max Ozone, Christo Ray Charleston High School Incorporated, Hess Chiropractic Performance and Family Chiropractic, Blue Line Towing, McLeod Information Systems, Homegrown Financial, Digital Ignite Advertising, Southeastern Institute, and Sweetgrass Pharmacy and Compounding. So we're excited that we're gonna be working with these businesses. Ben, can you talk a little bit about our member benefits that are absolutely, online? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, sir, uh, so much, Sarah. You know, it's, it's amazing and it's awesome that even in the midst of this pandemic, so many people find value in the Mount Pleasant Chamber membership. So welcome to those new members. Uh, I'd like to remind you, Shane touched on it earlier, uh, that we have so much stuff on our Mount Pleasant Chamber uh, website at uh, mountpleasantchamber.org. If you click on that, click on the banner at the top, the Coronavirus Resource Center, you can see that we have 52 offers from our Mount Pleasant Chamber members. Great, a bunch of great offers on there. And you can also check on the uh, job postings tab. We have nine job postings right now. So again, a lot of stuff to find on the mountpleasantchamber.org website. Jane, back to you.
Ben, Sarah, thank you very much for your efforts. Uh, obviously a very challenging time, but as Ben had said, uh, we still have a number of folks that see a solid value uh, in the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce in regards to membership, and we still have folks that are signing up. So we're grateful uh, to those new members, and we're also very grateful to our current members uh, as well. Let's get an update on strategic partnerships and marketing with uh, our Director of Development, the lovely and talented Rebecca Imholtz. Rebecca? Oh my, thank you so much, Shang, for that setup. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to thank everybody for hanging in there with us the last few months. We sent a survey out to you when this uh, pandemic started with COVID-19 to find out what you needed some information on. And you responded. And based on that, we have done a lot of very informative webinars, at least three virtual events a week. We have been doing updates from local elected officials, as Lauren Sims referred to earlier, Mondays with the mayor, the Honorable Will Haney has been very popular and usually Lauren Sims joins him and we get some great updates with the town and, and the latest that's going on with uh, COVID-19 and how businesses need to pivot. We also had a very informative webinar with US Congressman Joe Cunningham and appreciate his time and his staff's time putting that together. We've done some webinars on marketing and sales strategies. We call them Tuesdays, the sales pivot. We have had panelists from different industries come on and talk about how they have had to pivot so that they can make the most of uh, selling their products and services effectively during a post-pandemic economy. Our own John Carroll that you heard from earlier today, he moderates that. He does an excellent job. We've had webinars on social and video media marketing. We have a great partnership with SCORE. And because of our partnership, we've been able to do some webinars on the PPP and idle process with the Small Business Administration. Our own Mount Pleasant Chamber Treasurer, Joe Hensky, did a great job on tax planning and COVID-19. And he is back by popular demand next week. He's going to be talking about best practices if you had to uh, secure a PPP or idle loan, best practices in terms of how to go about using those funds. We've also had some webinars on cybersecurity. Now, all of these can be found, as Shane mentioned earlier today, they can be found on our website. We have our own YouTube channel. We just sent out another survey to you all last week. I encourage you to fill that out. Many of you already have, because moving forward, we wanna see where you are right now in the process with your business during this unprecedented time of COVID-19, how we can continue to support you and bring you information that you want. We also have wonderful partnerships. I just want you to know that at least every other week we're on a conference call with the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce as well as our local state officials and uh, we bring that information to you in our regular emails. And I wanted to also share with you an example of a great strategic partnership that we just recently had Michael Cochran, who is our Expo Committee Chair, he's also with Farm Bureau, and Farm Bureau was able to give $1,500 to another Mount Pleasant Chamber member, East Cooper Community Outreach for their food drive program. So that's just an example of where our members are supporting each other, and I'm really proud of that. I want to also thank the Moultrie News for allowing me to use that wonderful photo today and for the great partnership that we have with the Moultrie News, MoultrieNews.com. They're amazing and you can uh, keep up with all the goings-ons with the Chamber. Thank you, Shane. Rebecca, thank you for your efforts. And yes, uh, we really appreciate the partnership uh, with CC and Vicki and all the folks over there at the Moultrie News. Uh, we really appreciate uh, that partnership as well. Time now for the first responders presentation, and I'll hand it off to our president-elect, Mr. Eddie Phipps. Hey, Eddie. Hey, Shane. Thank you for uh, that introduction. It looks like we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Does that mean that I, I get a little bit more time to entertain? Uh, if you would like to do that, sir, you're more than welcome, yes. Well, um, we'll see if we have time at the end of the presentation, but, but thank you. Um, thanks, Shane. Thank you to those who are attending. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Eddie Phipps with the Phipps Law Firm. And as most of you know, the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce has presented a monthly award to the first responders for over two years now. And, and this award is given to those officers who have gone above and beyond the call of duty. Um, and typically, 
either Chief Carl Ritchie from the police department or Chief Mike Mixon would assist us and, and, and actually pick those um, individuals and we would try to um, take turns uh, representing and, and, and presenting that award to both. Uh, unfortunately, for the last 60 days, we have been un unable to present this award. Um, and, and we've been quarantined, social distancing. Um, it's been very difficult and it's uncertain times. But as we begin to open back up the business, the board felt that it would be important um, to get back to um, presenting this very special award um, that we as members um, enjoy to um, learn and, and hear and see what uh, the officers do above and beyond the call of duty. Um, but we decided as a board to not just present it to one officer. These have been very, very uh, interesting times. They have been on the front line. They have been exposing themselves, both police officers and firemen. So we decided to change this, the name of this award that we presented and called it the COVID-19 Hero Award and decided that we would present it not just to one individual officer, but we would present it to the departments as a whole. We uh, presented one to Carl Ritchie, Chief Carl Ritchie on behalf, he, he, he accepted it on behalf of the Mount Pleasant Police Department and Chief Mike Mixon accepted his on behalf of the fire department. And this um, ceremony was, took place last Wednesday, May 13th. And um, it was very special for all of us who attended and, and, and let me thank you for those who, who did attend, especially the chiefs taking time out of their time. But we also had um, the Honorable uh, Mayor Haney. There were several council members there. Um, I believe Gary Santos, Eric DeMore, I think Chris Stobbs took time out of his campaigning to um, show up. And there were many of the board members from the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. You may have seen if some of this uh, took place on news outlets. There was several media outlets there. Thank you to the Moultrie News. They were present and, and, and took many pictures for us all to remember that special occasion. So uh, in closing that uh, I would like to thank the responders. We all do, we all applaud you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, stay safe and keep six feet distance in, in your presentation. and and your, your service that you do for us. Thank you again. Excellent, thank you, Eddie. That was a, uh, that was a great day when we had the opportunity to uh, present both the police department and the fire department with those awards. And again, this is an idea that Eddie brought to us as a board and it's something that we've uh, taken on and, and gone with for two years now. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to recognize those that put themselves in danger uh, each and every day and we thank them for their uh, service. Before I hand it off to Chris Dobbs, if you have a question today for President Shu, you can put that question in the chat box and we will get to those questions after his presentation. So again, the chat box is just there at the bottom. If you have a question for President Shu, you can ask that question through the chat. Rebecca will communicate that question and we will get that question answered for you. Without further ado, I would like to introduce the President Emeritus, Mr. Chris Stobbs, for the introduction of our featured speaker, Mr. Andrew Shu. Chris? All right, good, so make sure I get this thing turned on for everybody. All right, glad to see so many people online today. Uh, looks like we have a pretty good turnout from what I can tell from the information I'm seeing. So I have the uh, distinct honor today to introduce to you President Shu, who earned his PhD in aerospace engineering from Georgia Institute of Technology in 1986. He spent a decade in industry before he joined academia. Before joining the College of Charleston, President Xu was the Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs at the University of Toledo. As a faculty member, he published 98 journal and conference articles. He is a fellow with the American Council on Education and is an associate fellow with the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Throughout his career, President Xu has remained actively engaged in the community. He is currently the Chair of the Board of Governors for Rocket Innovation, which is a nonprofit in Toledo where he used to live. He has also served on the Leadership Council of Cal Charge, <clears throat> which is a nonprofit organization statewide in California, the Board of Governors of Edison Materials Technology Center in Dayton, Ohio, the Board of Governors 
for the University Clean Energy Alliance of Ohio and was appointed by Governor Mitch Daniels as chair of the Indiana Byproducts Commission. In his free time, he enjoys tennis, classical music, and spending time with his wife and four daughters. Please give a warm Chamber of Commerce welcome to President Shu. Okay, now I'm unmuted. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for that uh, kind introduction, Chris. And thank, I want to thank the chamber and board members for inviting me to your meeting. This is uh, uh, such a great opportunity for me to be here with all of you here uh, this afternoon. As a newcomer to the Low Country, I obviously uh, wish that I could be with you in person, uh, but this virtual meeting will have to serve as the next best thing. I hope to make uh, our time together more of a conversation so that I may uh, address any questions uh, you might have um, about the College of Charleston and also allow me to uh, have a chance to learn a bit more uh, about your needs uh, in Mount Pleasant. So um, I will keep my remarks uh, fairly short. My goal here is pretty simple. I want you all to leave our virtual meeting knowing one thing, and that one thing is that the College of Charleston is a resource for you. We are a great resource for providing you put, uh, with potential employees, but we are also a great resource for providing uh, your workforce with continuing education for career advancement and we're a great resource for your business to have access to some of the top global researchers and, and in fact uh, here at Charleston uh, we have been collaborating with the uh, chamber uh, with with the um, business uh, what's the name of that organization <laughs> I'm drawing a blank uh, visitors bureau uh, convention and visitors bureau and, and they uh, rely on our researchers for their, their research for many a number of years. So the big takeaway uh, for you today is the College of Charleston is your university. Um, so let me uh, on that note uh, tell you a little more about your university and what is happening here right now. First let me uh, talk very briefly about the elephant in the room, which is COVID-19. Since mid-March, the College of Charleston has been conducting business like many of you remotely and at a distance. Our students had half of their spring semester converted to an online environment and our summer courses are all being taught through our distance learning systems. However, we hope to return to in-person instruction this fall. Uh, you all know this campus is a very special place, especially to our students. So we want to do everything possible uh, to bring our students back for that very unique on-campus experience. Right now, we have several different campus working groups and 10 of them, in fact, uh, making plans and uh, contingency plans on what that return may look like. In fact, we begin phase one of our return to work plan for our employees next Tuesday, May 26th, right after Memorial Day. If things go well and everyone follows the proper safety and health pro uh, protocols, uh, we have put in place and, and the number of cases remain low. We hope to move into phase two sometime in June, and then uh, phase three, perhaps uh, late June or early July. Only when we get through our phase in plan successfully will we be able to have students return to campus. Of course, things will not be the same on campus. It won't look or feel like it did in fall 2019. To that end, we're exploring a modified academic calendar. We will incorporate social distancing practices in the classroom 
and we will implement a thousand other adjustments to protect everyone's safety and health as best as we can. And that include the safety and health of the surrounding community that we live in. That being said, our faculty and staff are working hard to think of and to create an experience that will still be remarkable and uniquely Charleston for our students. However, things are going, um, things are going to be different here at the College of Charleston, regardless of the pandemic. And I mean that in a very good way. Earlier this month, the college's board of trustees adopted a new strategic plan. And uh, as many of you already know, a strategic plan is vital to the success of any business. And that's especially important uh, for uh, one as broad in scope and reach as a university. Without a strategic plan or roadmap, it is easy for a business to get lost and lose focus. I'm so proud of our college community, um, of uh, what it has achieved uh, this past year in working on this strategic plan together. I'm particularly proud of the fact that uh, we finished an outstanding plan despite the pandemic and the daily emergency management activities. It represents a lot of hard work of our faculty, staff, and students, our alumni, and our community partners. Uh, being from industry and business, you may find it unusual for an organization to spend an entire year, and in this case, an academic year, uh, to develop a strategic plan. But in an academic institution, this is quite normal. We tend to uh, be more cautious and more consultative. But I think it's a good thing because if everyone had input and everyone feel, feels ownership of the plan, it will be so much easier to rally everyone around this plan and make our implementation uh, that much more successful. We had some very frank uh, and uh, honest conversations and discussions over these past 10 months. And it was through these discussions that we established an updated mission, vision, and core values, and more importantly, a 10-year roadmap for the future of the college. So let me uh, give you a quick preview of our plan uh, before I answer any questions that you might have about our college. Um, this plan we uh, intend to fully unveil and roll out early in the fall semester. Through extensive on-campus discussion, we created three main pillars of the plan for the college to focus on. Uh, the first pillar is centered around student success. Uh, we are one of the best undergraduate institutions uh, in the country and especially in the Southeast. And we certainly want to enhance that reputation. That means uh, further improving our retention and graduation rates for our students, enhancing our experiential learning opportunities for our students. And a second pillar is centered around employee success. We want to create a workplace that is second to none for our faculty and staff. We want to be one of the best universities to work for in the entire country. The third pillar is focused on academic distinction. I, I want to open uh, or I want to spend a moment on this last pillar. Um, which is uh, academic distinction. What does uh, academic distinction really mean? In my mind, uh, this is not an ivory tower concept, but something that you all as business leaders will appreciate. Academic distinction in higher education 
um, is our code word for raising the brand in the eyes of consumers. And, and our consumers, of course, are our students and their parents. Many old school academics may not like to admit, uh, but universities are businesses. And raising the profile of an institution like ours means bringing the university's brand in alignment with consumer and community needs and expectations. So what does that mean for the College of Charleston? For us, it means moving the College of Charleston onto the national stage. Right now, the College of Charleston is considered a regional university in the eyes of many, and in fact, uh, too many, uh, if you ask me. While well, we have a national reputation, in fact, uh, you know, uh, more than a third of our students come from uh, around the country, primarily the Northeast. So we, we do have a national reputation. Um, in fact, uh, many of our outstanding programs in the arts, sciences, and business, uh, the College of Shawson as a whole, uh, however, is still uh, relegated to the regional category when it comes to rankings. Um, and, and we can argue all day long uh, about the value of rankings. And, and most people don't really believe in rankings unless they themselves are ranked number one or, or at least uh, ranked in the top 10. But as competition heats up for the anticipated shrinking population of high school and college ready students over the next six to 10 years, rankings will play an even greater role in guiding prospective students and their families in their college searches and their decisions. Like it or not, uh, rankings matter and it will matter more uh, in the future. Take the US News uh, and World Report, for example, the alpha of all rankings. There you find the College of Charleston in the regional list for, South, for Southern universities. However, we are very much more than a regional university. Our prestige, our location, our people, our programs are all of national importance and we want everyone to recognize that. In case you didn't know it already, the College of Charleston is the 13th oldest university in the entire country. And we're the oldest university anywhere south of uh, Virginia. And we have uh, just uh, been celebrating our 250th anniversary of our founding in 1770. So this is our 250th anniversary. But to be honest, uh, our age is the least interesting thing about the College of Charleston. Um, yes, we may be old, but more than anything, we're also bold. For the past 20 years, the College of Charleston has recruited students from across the country. Um, in, in fact, outside of uh, South Carolina, the largest student population actually uh, come to us from uh, the state of New Jersey. And, and so that shows our reputation in the Northeast region. Uh, so from across the country, we, we drew top students against the likes of Clemson, University of South Carolina, University of Georgia, or North Carolina, to name but a few of the national universities in which we have so many cross applications, meaning students apply to those campuses and to our campus, and many of them choose our campus as uh, their undergrad institution. So why should we remain in their shadow when it comes to a national reputation? Well, we don't have to, and we don't want to, and we won't. 
there is a path forward and we will make our way there. In short, it comes down to academic programming and what we offer on the graduate education level, specifically as it relates to doctoral and professional degrees. Uh, think in terms of degrees such as PhD, EDD, which is a doctoral, uh, doctoral uh, of education, and JD, and, and so forth. In the coming weeks and months, we will identify potential growth areas for the college and, to, and, and work to address our regional needs and also help us to move into a national university status. Once the right academic programs are established or expanded, and we produce a certain number of graduates in those terminal degree programs, the College of Charleston will have the ability to be reclassified, and therefore we will be able to move from the regional to the national rankings. Why does this matter and, and why now? Uh, the answer is uh, deceptively simple. Competition and competitiveness. Competitiveness of um, our institution, that for the low country and the competitiveness for our state. Right now, the state of South Carolina, for example, has only two truly uh, full public national universities, and you know both of them, uh, Clemson and Carolina. Uh, however, our neighbors in Georgia and uh, North Carolina have more than four times that number when it comes to public national universities. And even considering uh, the number of uh, uh, residents in the various states, uh, we still uh, fall far behind their level. Uh, for example, per institution, per national university, North Carolina and Georgia each um, have about 700,000 people uh, per national university. That is for each national university, they have uh, 700,000 citizens, right? But for South Carolina, we have five and a half million people and two national universities, which means that for uh, there's one national public university for every 2.75 million people instead of 700K. So uh, that is at least two, two and a half times less or fewer uh, than our neighbors. Uh, we as a state are poorer, uh, both intellectually and economically for it. So it is imperative that the College of Charleston climbs that ladder. Just a few short months ago, before the pandemic, this certainly made perfect sense when the economy was booming. Uh, we have, uh, we, we became one of the far fastest growing regions in the country and uh, our region and our state uh, are competitive in attracting not only the best and brightest student to the area, but also competitive uh, in attracting the best and brightest companies, um, you know, companies like Boeing, Volvo, Mercedes-Benz, Bosch and so forth, they're all here in, in the region. A college of Charleston as strong, uh, as a strong national university is an important piston in our shared economic engine in the low country. Well, that was yesterday, you might say. Uh, COVID-19 has changed everything. Actually, now in the world remade by COVID-19 and in the world looking for ways to recover, a stronger College of Charleston is now more important than ever to the low country and to the state of South Carolina. Before the pandemic, I had read several futurists that say, we as a society are seeing the equivalent 
of a century worth of change and innovation happening in only a decade now. And that is a lot of change packed into a small amount of time. Think of all that occurred in the 20th century, the rapid expansion of automobile use, the invention of flight, computer, space exploration. Now consider that all taking place in just 10 years. With today's advances, the speed of change is increasing exponentially. Imagine how quickly we have put tools of technology to good use, such as remote workspaces and online ordering. I'm sure many of you are now realizing new efficiencies uh, in your business that you never even thought of until the advent of products like Zoom and Team. While I know everything seems like it has changed, there are some things, of course, that are the same. From my perspective, education is the key to it all. Education pr prepares us for change and it prepares us to make change. The College of Shaolin is uniquely positioned to handle this world of constant disruption. With our grounding in the liberal arts and sciences, the College of Shaolin teaches its students to be flexible and versatile. While they graduate in 2020, uh, or whether um, they graduate in 2020 or if they graduated in 1970. We prepare our students for a lifetime of learning. A diploma, while an important milestone, is not the finish line, not in today's world. The diploma is a symbol of our graduates' ability to tackle the many challenges ahead. And this certainly makes sense in a post-COVID-19 world as we look for ways to address public health needs while balancing that with the economy. There are so many challenges ahead and creative, adaptable thinkers will find a way to succeed. One new program that starts this fall is especially representative of this change at the college uh, and the changes we need as a community. This fall, the college is welcoming its first cohort of students into its new major in systems engineering. It is the first engineering program of, main, of, of many um, at the College of Charleston. For those of you unfamiliar with systems engineering, uh, let me maybe explain a, a little bit since uh, I'm an engineer. Uh, if the solution to a problem involves a number of interconnected pieces instead of just one, then it is a system. You know, a car is a system, an airplane is a system, a hospital is a system, a university is a system. So systems engineering uh, have applications uh, almost anywhere. And, and in fact, uh, most engineers uh, know this. If you uh, worked as an engineer long enough, you will become a systems engineer. So systems engineers are uh, able to plug into a variety of technical roles on teams working to design, implement, maintain complex systems of hardware, software, or human systems. They take an interdisciplinary approach to problem solving. So they are the individuals in the company who understand the computing, electrical, mechanical, industrial, business, and human aspects of systems. They develop solutions that meet consumers and customers' needs. Uh, they constantly monitor all stages of operations and involve 
uh, are involved uh, with managing projects. Systems engineers ensure that problems uh, have been solved. I imagine a few of you could probably benefit from having a systems engineer on your staff uh, right now. Um, so give us a few years and we will have them for you. In closing, I want to reiterate how important our relationship with you all is. We, the College of Shelson, need you, and, and I do believe you need us. So um, in our strategic plan, one of the themes uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, we have three pillars that are vertical, if you imagine the building uh, here that I'm in, uh, Randolph Hall, for those of you who have been on campus. Um, if, if we have three pillars, uh, those three pillars are student success, uh, faculty and staff success, and then our academic reputation. And then we have some cross-cutting themes that we have developed. And we have, in fact have three of those developed. And one of those three uh, con connecting our pillars um, is uh, our partnerships with our local business and nonprofit organizations and, and also our local governments. The, uh, the systems engineering program is just one example of that kind of uh, relationship with our industry partners. In fact, uh, several industry partners helped us to formulate the curriculum for systems engineering, and they now serve on the program uh, industrial advisory board to help us guide the program and evolve it over time. I see those kind of partnerships happening across academic disciplines. And one example I gave you is our partnership with uh, our local convention and business bureau. We had a long time successful partnership with them. I'm excited for what the College of Charleston can become in coming years. And I'm excited to see how it can play a more important role in your lives uh, and in the lives of the city of uh, Mount Pleasant. So with that, I will end there and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. President Chu, thank you very much for uh, your presentation. A uh, lot of great content. We thank you very much uh, for your time today, sir. Rebecca, I understand we do have a few questions for President Chu. We do, Shane. So this follows along the lines, President Shu, of your conversation about partnerships and nonprofits. This quest the first question is, as a representative of the Wando Air Force ROTC program, we're focused on fundraising to sustain our program. In these times, what advice do you have on forming financial partnerships and fundraising? So uh, I, I guess what I would say is, uh, if you can find partnerships uh, where you have a win-win situation, that's probably the best kind of partnership you, you can find in terms of uh, fundraising. Uh, if you can have, uh, for example, two nonprofit organizations uh, partner with each other and uh, both would benefit from uh, the type of fundraising that you both are engaged in, then you can find a broader uh, donor base and, and more interest in giving. So uh, that's, in fact, an approach that uh, we are also taking, and, and that is we're trying to partner with uh, our local uh, nonprofit organization partners uh, in terms of uh, fundraising. Very good. And this, uh, President Shu, this question is, with the way COVID-19 has affected the Charleston area, will you continue to encourage students and staff to get involved with the local nonprofit community? I, I certainly would uh, encourage uh, our students to be more uh, involved. In fact, I feel like this is uh, uh, an even better time for our students to develop that so those skills they'll need in the real world and, and their perspective uh, 
in better understanding the real world. And, and uh, this is clearly a challenging time uh, for a lot of people. And, and uh, it's a good time to challenge our students uh, and, and uh, have them more in, be more involved. And speaking of challenging times, do you have a plan if you are unable to reopen this fall? We do have contingency plans. In, in fact, uh, we, we have all kinds of contingency plans of what ifs and, and what we will do. And uh, obviously, if, uh, if we, uh, for example, uh, goes back to a uh, l very large number of new cases uh, by August and, and we can't uh, bring students back to campus, then we will um, have online education continuing. Although that's not our preferred uh, mode because most students uh, tell us that uh, they are really eager to come back to campus. They miss the campus, they miss the interaction with their faculty. And, and one uh, reason that the College of Charleston is unique is because of its location and because its people uh, are caring faculty and staff. So uh, we do need to uh, find a way, if at all possible, to bring our students back. President Chu, again, thank you very much uh, for your time today. That is all the questions uh, that we do have for you today, sir. Uh, appreciate your time. Great content. We wish you all the very best of luck uh, over the summer and also as we move into uh, to next school year. Thank you, sir, for being with us today. Thank you, Shan. Thanks, everyone, for having me here. Thank you. Yes, sir. Be safe and stay healthy, okay? Take care. Thank you. A couple of things I'd like to wrap up before we uh, let you out of here. Uh, again, a reminder to visit the Coronavirus Resource Center page at the website. That is uh, mountpleasantchamber.org, mountpleasantchamber.org. All the information that you would ever want to know in regards to the virus and business-related topics to the virus. As I said at the top of the meeting, if you need us, please reach out, info at mountpleasantchamber.org info at mountpleasantchamber.org. You can also reach your individual board members at the website. There is a uh, page where all the board members have their great pictures with their emails. You can send emails uh, individually to them. If I can be of service to you, send me an email, shane at mountpleasantchamber.org. Again, shane at mountpleasantchamber.org. I like to help people and I'm here to help you if you need it. So please reach out to us if you need a connection to a person or a connection to a resource of some kind. As I normally do, I'd like to end up today's meeting with a motivational uh, poem. I found this, interestingly enough, a poem written by Laura Kelly Fanucci, and it uh, doesn't mention COVID-19, but it is written about the current situation uh, that we are in. When this is over, we may never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger, full shelves at the store, conversations with neighbors, a crowded theater, Friday night out, the taste of communion, a routine checkup, the school rush, every morning, coffee with a friend, the stadium roaring, each deep breath, a boring Tuesday, life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be. We were called to be, we hope to be, and may we stay that way better for each other because of the worst. Again, that a poem by Laura Kelly Fanucci. I thank you very much for uh, attending today's first ever virtual monthly luncheon of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. Be safe, stay healthy, and keep moving forward.